Hi everybody, Miss Roberts here on this beautiful Wednesday. I know as soon as I finish reading today, I'm going to head outside for a nice long walk to enjoy the weather. So, we are on chapters 5 today. Chapter 5 and 6. Chapter 5, Flames in the Mist. Now remember, when we left Jack and Annie, they were on top of the ninja's shoulders as they crossed the very cold stream. The water grew shallow again. Then they were on dry land. The ninjas lowered Jack and Annie to the ground. Thanks, said Annie. Thanks, said Jack. Squeak, said the mouse. The ninjas said nothing, but they looked around. Jack looked around, too. A full moon was rising in the sky. Dark rocks dotted the side of the mountain. Then the ninjas started moving. They went silently up the slope between the rocks. Jack and Annie followed them. Jack wasn't afraid of the ninjas now. In fact, he was starting to like them. Maybe they really could help find Morgan. The ninjas moved silently, but Jack and Annie had pl made plenty of noise. They panted as they climbed the rocky hillside. Their wet sneakers made squishy sounds. Suddenly, the ninjas froze. Jack could see their eyes darting around. Voices were coming from the valley below. Jack saw torches flaming in the mist. The ninjas started moving faster. Jack and Annie hurried after them. Who's carrying the torches, asked Annie. Jack was too out of breath to speak. He also didn't have an answer. They came to a pine forest. Night birds called out. Wind rattled the branches. The ninjas moved like ghosts through the forest. They appeared and disappeared through moonlight and shadows. Jack and Annie struggled to keep up. Finally, the ninjas came to a stop. One ninja held out his hand as if to say, wait. Then both ninjas stepped away into the shadows of the trees. They were gone. Where did they go, said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. Maybe the book can tell us. He pulled the ninja book out of his pack. He turned to the pages until he came to a picture of a cave. By the light of the full moon, he read, Sometimes ninjas held meetings in hidden mountain caves to plan secret missions. Oh, man, said Jack. I bet they went inside a hidden cave. He pulled out his notebook and pencil. He wrote, meetings in hidden caves. Jack turned the page. He stared at a picture of a ninja sitting on a mat. He read, ninjas took orders from a ninja master. The master was a mysterious, wise person who knew many secrets of nature. Wow, whispered Jack. Just then, the two ninjas returned. Jack quickly put his books away. The short ninja motioned for Jack and Annie to follow. In the shadows was the entrance of a dark cave. What's in there, Annie whispered. The ninja master, Jack whispered back. Chapter 6, Shadow Warrior. Jack and Annie went into the cave. They followed the ninja through the darkness. The back of the cave was lit with dozens of candles. Shadows danced on the walls. In the flickering light, Jack saw a dark figure sitting on a woven mat. The Ninja Master. The ninja bowed to the master. Then he stepped to the one side. The master stared at Jack and Annie. Sit, he said. Jack and Annie sat on the cold, hard floor. Squeak! The mouse poked its head around Annie's pouch. It's okay, Peanut, she said. The master stared at the mouse for a moment. Then he looked at Jack. Who are you, he asked. I'm Jack, and that's my sister Annie, he answered. Where do you come from? the master asked. Frog Creek, Pennsylvania, Annie answered. Why are you here? he asked. We're trying to help our friend Morgan Le Fay, said Jack. She left us a message. Annie pointed to the short ninja. We gave the message to him. You mean you gave the message to her, said the ninja master, and she has given it to me. She, said Jack and Annie together. The woman ninja's eyes sparkled. Jack thought she might be smiling. The master held up Morgan's note. Perhaps I can help you, he said. But first, you must prove yourselves worthy of my help. Just then, the tall ninja appeared. He made a sign to the master. The master stood up. He handed Morgan's note to Annie. We must go now, he said. The samurai are close. Samurai, asked Jack. He knew that the samurai were fierce Japanese fighters. 
Were they the ones in the valley, Jack asked? The ones with the torches? Yes, our family is at war with them, said the master. We must leave before they find us. But what about helping Morgan, said Annie. The master strapped on his sword. I have no time now, he said. I must go. Can't we go with you, said Annie? No, there's no place for you where we are going. You must find your way back to the house in the trees. Alone, said Jack. Yes, you must go alone and beware of the samurai. Why, said Jack. They will still... They will think you are one of us, said the master. They will ask you no questions. They will show you no mercy. Yikes, whispered Annie. But you have seen the way of the ninja. You can practice it yourselves now, said the master. How, said Jack. Remember three things, said the master. What, said Jack. Use nature, be nature, follow nature. I can do that, said Annie. Jack looked at her. You can? He said. The master turned to Jack. Your treehouse lies to the east. That is the way you must go, he said. How? wondered Jack. How do we find the east? Before he could ask, the master bowed, then disappeared into the shadows. Two ninjas led Jack and Annie out of the cave into the moonlight. The tall one pointed at the pine forest. Then they disappeared into the darkness. Jack and Annie were all alone. Ooh. I gotta say, the last book was very adventurous. This book is very ominous. I don't know what's gonna happen next. And it's very, like, I don't know. Now they're alone, I'm worried. But I'm excited, and I can't wait to read more with you again tomorrow. Have a great Wednesday. Bye-bye.